Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and if you're watching, you know what time it is. It is time for Magic 2014, Duels of the Planeswalkers. I'm here with the Bant deck, Champions of the something champion, I don't know what the hell it's called. Uh, Bant being, of course, the shard that's got white and it's paired colors, green and blue, friendly colors. They all play together, these three colors. I don't know if I really should have taken this hand. Possibly not the best hand. I thought it would give me a good start, but uh, I also didn't want to drag things out. I got my Kasali Pride Mate, my Rafika the Many, my Sublime Archangel, and hey, when you know it, the luck. Hitting into a forest. Now all I need is an island. Kasali Pride Mate, drop it down, and of course Exalted being that whenever you have a single creature attacks on its own, whenever it goes out there in a scary world by itself like Ash from Pokemon, it gets plus one, plus one for each Exalted uh, on the board. And then Exalted st stacks with itself. So if you have a bunch of things to give each other other Exalted, um, you have a whole lot of Exalted. These people are just holy. They are just like you. Whoever is going out in the fight, you, man, you're cool. Go out and fight for us. We're just going to hang back. You can do all the fighting and have people throwing arrows and shit at you. But we are going to be, um, we're just going to be standing back here cheering for you. We've got big billboards. Go, you. Uh, it's going to be great. So, you know, I guess Exalted's cool, but at the same time, it's kind of like, kind of dickish. Would really like the island about now. And I have been severely uh, considering changing the deck build a lot so that I have only islands in the higher cost cards. So, like, only stuff on Rafika the Many and Final Hour. And not having really uh, Rocks War Monks. Now, they're really good, but there's also a lot of other good stuff at the three slot. All these cards are really good. It's basically good stuff dot deck. You got to take out all the really boring, like those 0 04 guys with Defender and Exalted. They don't serve a purpose. I mean, I guess they could be a decent wall. I guess the good thing about them is if you're going to have Exalted, uh, might as well have some guys that can lead back and block, because I'm sure as hell not really going to block with a 1-1. And it looks like my opponent is mana screwed, so I could have a shot here. Could have a shot of taking it easy. I got Janara, a Sara of War. She is an angel, 3-3 three, three flying. You pay 2, 1-1 one, one, white, to put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on her. She gets real big, real fast. She puts on the calories... She cannot squeeze in her armor anymore. That's some sweet goddamn art. Rock's War Monk art is cool, but kind of WTF-y. Three Diabolic Edicts in a row. Are you fucking kidding me? See, this is the one thing. The Lord's Darkness deck, it's got so much removal. Like, the whole deck, it's like removal.deck. And here I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to have a problem. Still, I need to hit either a fourth land of anything or preferably an island, and then I can play everything in my hand. Bant Charm is great. Um, you can kill artifacts, which is great versus samurai. You can put a creature at the bottom of its owner's deck, which kills anything. And you can counter instant spells. And is this a land? No. Nope. Of course, I'm going to... No matter what, watch. I'm going to get something, and then he's just going to have, like, his fourth Diabolic Edict. I don't, I don't actually know if that deck has four. All I know is that three is already pretty nasty. Now, I want to people to keep in mind, Diabolic Edict is a great card. It is super, super good. Okay, but it's not like the be-all end-all card. It's guess this fiend was it whenever whenever it dies, everyone loses three life. Right now, that'd be beneficial to me. If I had a way to kill them right now, um, I would come out ahead of that because I'm still at 17. He's at 10. He'd be down at four. I'd be down at whatever 17 minus six is. I got this, and I have the option to equip next turn. It will cost me three. Ooh, look at that animation animation on the mythic cards and certain rare cards pretty cool and of course the uh the sledge here giving plus two plus two lifelink trample and mediocre cgi graphics yes i remember what it was like to play games on the sega cd as well i do remember that no mercy and we talked about this last time whenever creature deals damage you gotta destroy it now i might just swing anyway i might just swing anyway he's probably just gonna double swing here um, he might be expecting a combat trick, but I don't have anything I can play. Band Charm, unfortunately, requiring an island. Rafika the Many gives your Exalted guys um, double strike. Very powerful. Uh, and I feel like this deck, I I'm even considering just changing this deck to just be a green-white deck. Because while Rafika the Many is great, Rock's War Monk is great, the Band Charms are great, Rick. Really, all that stuff is really good. It's like really good stuff. And I could swing. We're just going to lose my guy. I could just hold this guy back. Threaten him as a block, so then I, I take less damage. Uh, I think that... Yeah, I think that's all I'll do. He probably has removal, though. The one thing is, it just becomes hard to play these cards. And all these cards are really good. But it's kind of like, alright, Sublime Archangel and that other angel. Like, the angels in this deck are where it's at. Like, the angels, you drop them. You pretty much swing the game around in one turn. Like, you drop Sublime Archangel or that other one that gives the attacking creature lifelink and exalted or whatever. 
it's like when those things hit the board, you win. Like you basically win. If they can't stop it that turn or the following turn, the game is over. You got like all of the um, the other rocks guys, the defender guys, the three three guys that you can sacrifice to. Uh, and this is coming like twenty turns too late. So pretty much over. It's pretty much no point. I'm not even gonna get a land. Like what is the goddamn point? He knows he won. Like there's no way. If I got this like eight turns ago, that would have been great. And it's funny because um, Xander, 2129, I don't know if that's supposed to be a year or what, um, started out with the mana problems, and now I kind of hit them, so I'm being punished for them. I should not have taken a two-land hand, especially a one-color two-land hand. I should have mulliganed again. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not cool with ending the video here. I'm going to keep recording. I'm going to keep talking. I like to hear myself talk. I hope you at home like to hear me talk. Otherwise, what, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? I mean, what are you doing with your life anyway? You're sitting here watching me play Magic? I mean, I, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm flattered. I'm, but could, could you be out there, you know, curing diseases or something. All right, so two land hand. Um, uh, I don't like this. Don't like it. A million land hand with Balgrace Angel, I'll take it. Pro possibly a bad play. I could definitely draw into way too many lands. I really need to hit, like, some one, two drops. The fact that I'm going first helps a little bit. Martial Coup, by the way, X and two white, sorcery. You put X, one, one soldier tokens on the battlefield, and it's five. if you put it five or more soldiers on the battlefield, boom, everything other than your soldiers dies. Pariah, very cool. And we got that weird bug if you're zoomed into a card, we can draw a card and it zooms in. And I'm just going to drop my forest there because that way if I top deck into an island... Oh, wait, that doesn't really do anything for me. Now, the one thing with Martial Coup that I think people forget about is that... Um, you don't have to cast it for five or more. You can totally just like use it on turn four and create two tokens. You can totally use it at any time and create as many tokens as you want if you need some attackers. Uh, combos really well with Exalted Angel for reasons that um, should be obvious. Uh, Pariah is an absolutely great card. See, I can Marshall Coup for one right now, make a one one. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm basically going to wait till he drops some kind of demon and then throw Pariah on it. And Pariah is whenever the creature deals damage uh, to you. It deals damage to itself. Whenever any damage is dealt to you, it's done to the creature instead. So you can put it on a uh, big fatty like Halo Hunter there. And I'm really glad, by the way, that um, I do not have... I'm just going to make sure I leave a planes open. That I do not have a, a, an angel on the battlefield because he would have just smattered it all over the board. I've got my squire on the board. Squire. So basically, any damage that would be taken to me goes to Halo Hunter instead. So if he swings a Halo Hunter, it'll kill itself. If he swings anything with two power more, it'll kill Halo Hunter. Um, and this is a great way to control their biggest creatures. Another thing that you can consider doing that most people don't do, I think, is you can put um, Pariah on there. I'm just, I'm just making sure I read Balgrace Angel correctly. You can put Pariah on like one of their really fat creatures with huge toughness because they had like a 4 10 creature you put pariah on that like what are the odds they can do 10 damage to you at once because if they can't they'll never do damage to you because if they can't kill their own creature off pariah will just stay attached to it forever and he's just assigned does he want to swing here and lose his halo hunter and the answer is he does now what's great about battle grace angel which is going to be my next turn play is i'm going to drop battle grace ooh shiny islands battle grace angel Drop this into play, double exalted, so my guy's going to be 3-3 three, three lifelink, could swing in, is he really going to want to block 3-3 three, three and lose his demon? His demon, by the way, his blood tithe, or whatever the hell it's called, allows him to draw an extra card every turn in exchange for one life. And, if absolutely necessary, he could use it to kill me off. So now I can swing in with this thing, there's no way he's going to block. Um, and yeah, he can swing back for 4, but the difference is... I'm doing three damage a turn to him, okay? So I'd win in seven turns because he's on. he has 20 life. That's a seven-turn clock. He would be doing four damage a turn to me, except I'm gaining three life a turn. So I'm really taking one damage a turn. So I'm on a 23-turn clock if he doesn't block here. Um, clock block. So there you go. And, of course, I can swing with the Battle Grace next turn, swinging for six. Now, of course, he'll probably want to kill the Battle Grace Angel if he has a means to do that. And I'm not going to be surprised here if he decides to draw a card because that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Blood Gift Demon. Really great card. And Heartless Summoning, by the way, reduces all the mana cost of his creatures by two in exchange for um, them being minus one, minus one. Totally worth it. You don't, you probably don't want two of them out, but having one out basically makes all your demons super playable, super fast. It's pretty much a discount. Like, you know, you go to the supermarket and you walk in the door. It's like, today only 20% off all demons. Buy one demon, get an acolyte free. Buy two acolytes, get life loss free. It's really crazy. He plays that imp. Um, which whenever I play a non-demon spell, uh, 
Basically, whenever I play spells, I'm going to be losing life. It doesn't even matter what the hell it is. I got my monk here. Um, I don't know if there's a point to playing him, because I might have to martial coup very soon. I could basically do it next turn and destroy all creatures. So I don't really see a point in playing the monk. He doesn't have Exalted, so he's not going to boost my angel on attack. My angel will be a 6-6 six, six flyer. Life link on attack, bringing me up to 29. Beautiful life. And I don't know. I, if I were him, I would chump with his 0-1 creature. I don't know if I'd take 6 damage to face. Um... I would definitely not chump with the Blood Gift Demon. And the thing that does suck about heart Heartless Summoning, though, is while it's very cool on your demons that are already gigantic anyway for them to be minus one, minus one, you kind of turn your a lot of your creatures like that imp into zero one. Like, you know, like creatures that could be marginally useful with like one power or like two toughness are now basically useless. They just become little shells. And um, I think I'm done here. Yep, no reason to cast anything else. If I cast my monk, who knows? He could have damnation. He could have mutilate. He could literally kill everything on the board. I don't want to lose more creatures. If he plays a big demon, though, then I have, um, I have the option to basically have a martial coup, like let them eat cake. Citizens are rising up. The guillotines are coming out. People are gonna be dying in the street. And here, promise of power. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna draw five life and lose five cards? Or is he gonna make a demon? Uh, oh, okay. He all right. So he went for that. He's gonna draw a whole lot of cards. And now he's at 10. He is pretty much going to have to block my angel next turn. I could attack with the angel and with the squire. Um, although I feel like he might just let the angel through and then block the squire. And then next turn he could... Because he clearly... He drew five cards. He's at eight cards. He's at discard. Excuse me. I had a little too much Coca-Cola today. That's not true. I only drink Coke Zero. Um, I mean, he could have anything. He could literally have anything. I, I, I am very sure that whatever he has is more than enough to wipe out me. So I think I'm just going to go for attack here, not play my cards, hold him close to my chest. I don't believe his deck has discard, so I'm not worried about um, him making me ditch my hand. And Sublime Archangel shows up. Uh, Sublime is cool in the 90s, and Sublime is still cool now. 4-3 Flying Exalted. All creatures that you control have Exalted. Even if they already have Exalted, then they have two copies of Exalted. So what that basically means is, if I dropped it right now, I would have her, plus each of their Exalted, so that'd be three, plus those other creatures that have two more Exalted, would be plus five, plus five for everything that attacks. So I could have dropped it, okay? I could have dropped uh, Sublime Archangel right now, and also played like Rocks and War Monk, so that that would also have Exalted, but... It would be more than 10 power, but I know he's just going to chump block anyway. He's going to chump block no matter what. He's not going to take 6 damage to the face. And odds are he's got like damnation or something like that. So he's going to chump block. He is not in any way interested in, um, in taking the damage to the face. Plus he's probably got something that's going to wipe out all my stuff. So uh, I think playing these cards in my hand, while it, in theory I could have won this turn, the reality is he's got removal. He just drew six cards last turn. Seven cards because of that demon, too. He drew seven cards last turn, and I'll be totally damned if he doesn't have a board wipe or, like, just massive removal or things that just make everything out on the board. Oh, yeah, Doomblade coming out. Um, that is a really bad play, by the way. That is a terrible play to play Doomblade right now. Um, and the main reason is it's an instant. So he could just wait until I attack with Exalted, play out my hand, and he could just Doomblade my guy in response. Uh, so that I basically don't have an attack if I went for the exalted attack. So I don't know what he, why he would do that. And he's still sitting on five cards, two mana, and a diabolic edict. So he just wants me to get rid of all my stuff. See, what I would have done is diabolic edict me right now, and then wait on the doom blade, see what I do, and then doom blade when I go to attack. So now he's going to swing in for two, putting me down to a very extremely scary 33 life. Like I am absolutely petrified ladies and gentlemen he's gonna at this rate i will die in 17 turns wait that's not true six i have seven turns to make something happen so you know what i'm gonna do um hmm. could drop the war monk this turn and the archangel or i could drop the war monk this turn and martial coup or i could drop the just the archangel seems like they'll just die to an edict or something if i just martial coup for like seven i clear everything out yeah I'll, you know i'll, I'll cast a monk I'll just, you know, I'll just get, he just used like every, he, look, look how much removal he used, like how much more removal could he possibly have, I mean, I mean that didn't work out for him last time, get these creatures on the board, get these creatures on the board, um, I got my 4-3, and next turn, essentially what this means is I could swing for like 1, 2, 3, swing for a bunch, gain a bunch of life, 
I got the Marshall Coup. I still have the Marshall Coup in my back pocket. So if I need to clear the entire board, I can. He's going down to 9 life. Can I do 9 damage next turn? Right now with the current board state, I can deal 6 damage next turn. Um, but of course, I'm not going to guess he's going to swing in with Blood Gift Demon. Unless, of course, he has other scary demons. No mercy. Okay. Alright. So anything I swing at him is dead. He's going to die. Um, and I just I just can't help but think that he should have held on to Doomblade. I feel like that's going to cost him the game. Xander... Xander boy, if you could hear me, I tried to talk to him before, he didn't hear me, and his voice chat's not on. Xander, if you could hear me, you threw this game, man, with that Doomblade, you cost yourself the game. I feel like you cost him the game. So, is he really, he's not going to swing at me, right? I'm at 33 life, like, if I were him, I were at 9 life, and my opponent were 33, I wouldn't swing, because, like, he doesn't have control of the board. Like, he's got, I mean, he's got four cards in hand, so I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he's going to mutilate, he's swinging in first, to see if I bite, like, maybe if I... Don't block now. He's going to mutilate. I go down 29. Um, all right. And he's got a lot of land on tap. So really anything could happen. Let's see what I got. Oh! Oh, Dawnless Escort. 3 for 3-3. Three, three. He can make my creatures indestructible. If I play him first and he doesn't immediately respond, if he had a response, it would be really smart to immediately respond with Doomblade. Um, if I drop this down first and he doesn't respond, and I'm just going to guess he's not too good with instant responses, um, then I can sack this thing. Uh, to pump up my guys, that'll be one, two, three copies of Exalted. I can attack for seven, and, um, hey, wait a second. All right, so just like I was saying before, I could play Marshall Coup for the non-boom effect. Just drop three guys on the board. Give all my guys, uh, all these guys are going to have Exalted. So there's going to be three, four, five, six copies of Exalted on my Sublime Archangel. And she could swing in for, like, ten damage. All right, let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Six! Five, four, man, it's a little slower than I hope. Three, I gotta change these options. Two, <laughs> one, happy new year. Should old planes be forgot and never walked again? I am from TopTierTactics.com and my name is Wingspan. Cheers.